So what are we doing tonight? Well, since we've been racing the shit out of this car, I've decided to finally change transmission fluid and we are using Redline MT90, supposed to be the best thing for this car, especially considering the conditions I run it under. I always use Mobile One, full synthetic, high mileage in this car, just hit 150,000 miles last week. And we are also gonna be changing the spark plugs because this particular car seems to like copper plugs. I've used these before in my last two protégés, they run real good. These are the long reach plugs. The NGK part number is actually ZFR5F11. You can verify that shit. People run these, okay? They're a little bit longer reach plug. The spark gets in them a little bit better. I know most people say spark plugs won't change the way a car drives. These plugs have made a big difference in this car as far as idling and smoothness and stuff. So we're going to get under it. We're going to drain the transmission fluid. We're going to drain the oil out of it. We're going to service this car up. And unfortunately, we're going to winter wheels. It is the beginning of October and my uh, 17s have worn the tires out. I've got a couple of flat spots that are completely smooth. So we're going to do that as well and hopefully get this get this car back on the road for next week. Got to go to work. So let's get under there and start draining some shit. Okay, we are under the car. Clearly, this direction right here is the front of the car, okay? We are on the driver's side right now. So the fill plug is right here, and I've already broken them loose. And it's good to know that if you cannot get the fill plug loose, don't bother breaking loose the drain plug, which is right here, because obviously you don't want to drain the fluid if you can't get it back in it. And there's supposed to be a 23 millimeter, which I didn't have, so I used a 15 16 SAE, and they were actually not on there very tight. Remember, it is not a cast iron case. It is, in fact, aluminum. So be careful when you're messing with stuff and you don't tear threads out of things. It's probably always a good idea in these situations, especially working with aluminum and other alloys to make sure the vehicle is cool and not hot so the steel holds its rigidity and everything we don't we don't want to tear shit up okay just real quickly on how I'm gonna actually fill it because the hole is at an angle it's actually almost embarrassing but I'm gonna show it anyway for those other do-it-yourself people who aren't well equipped such as myself I just have your normal funnel here just our normal funnel and underneath the car, I have an old piece of hose that I had from a crappy eBay intake that's been replaced. So you can actually see the funnel and the hose is just going to the fill hole. And I actually have my drain pan here. And what we wanna do is actually put the oil into there until it's starting to come out and that's when it's full and I think it's 2.8 quarts or something like this. I have three quarts. So hopefully we will get this filled up here real quick. And be sure when you're tightening these down, both of these, that you are careful not to over tighten them. It would definitely be best to torque them down or pay very close attention to how tight you're putting them. You absolutely do not want to be stripping these out. Let's fill her up. Just like that, transmission flush or transmission drain and change is completed. I did not remove the splash guard. Again, I feel like I need to emphasize that because the more I read about it, everybody says you need to take that off. It's still in there. Okay? We don't need to be taking off the freaking splash guard. That's a bunch of unnecessary work. You're going to use a funnel and a hose anyway to fill it. You don't even need it to get the drain plugs out. You don't need an impact to get a drain plug out of an aluminum transmission. That's how you break stuff. If it's still too tight, put a cheetah bar on your ratchet to get it out. Don't be using an impact unless you know what you're doing. That's how everything breaks. Take your time, relax, put your car up on a couple of jack stands. I have been in here for maybe 15 minutes and that includes jacking the car up. This is a very simple job. So I'm going to go ahead and service the engine, including the spark plugs real quick, 
and get this dude back down on the ground with some decent tires on some ugly chrome wheels so we can go race next weekend. Okay, we are changing the plugs on this car. I've already pulled my uh, plugs off. This is not the standard coil and plug wire arrangement. Okay, this is off the 1.8. This is totally different. This is a 626 valve cover. So yours is gonna look different. You're gonna have the coil packs bolted on, but the principle's all the same. Just make sure you pay attention to what plug wire comes off of what plug, okay? So on the stock valve cover, you're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts over each coil pack because they're uh, coil over plug. And if I remember right, it's one here and one here. So you're gonna remove those bolts and the, the uh, wires will plug off of the coil and they come straight out. And then there's the two extra plug wires that go down that plug into the coils. So that will all come off. My setup is easier because Signature Products has outfitted such a beautiful engine bay. Now I've already loosened the one because I wanted to make sure that my plugs were the same before I pulled them all out, okay? And it's just your standard 5.8 spark plug socket. And the plugs actually look okay, but they are copper. They have been in here for approximately 25,000 miles. They are the same as I've had. And since this is such a routine thing, I am quite simply taking one out, making sure it's the same damn plug, and I can tell you right now, they're the same plug, but to show the difference in these, and I'm marginally concerned at the difference in the gap because it looks pretty significant. So I'll show on camera the difference of the plug. It's quite gray, it's not wet, it looks like it's it's almost running a little bit lean, but I can I can definitely tell that the gap on the older plugs has opened up with them being in there. And like I said, these are not platinums or not iridium or whatever the whatever the the new kids are talking about these days. These old cars tend to really like their copper plugs. And like I've said in my other videos, and I will continue to say in every video. I never seize everything, especially when it's going into aluminum aluminum cases, and this is no different. And I want to be sure to torque these down to what factory spec says as well, because I have had, okay, I have not had, I have worked on cars where they have blown a spark plug out because some guy got on it with his wrench and he put it on there until he thought it was tight enough, and then the plug blew out. So. Let's get our torque wrench dialed in and torque these dudes down. Had to grab a new battery, I killed this one. Factory suggests 11 to 16 pounds. I usually aim, or I'm sorry, 11 to 16. So I actually usually aim for the middle of that. And we'll say 10, 11, 12, 13, nice even number. It's a number joke, people. I have never seized these, so they definitely don't need to be tight. Keep in mind you are going into an aluminum head. I actually got a little scared. I put it down to 11 and a half. 11 and a half. So we'll go up to 12. I'm very, very paranoid when it comes to spark plugs. So 12 pounds. We're going to do that and back these other ones out real quick.
Okay, there we go. Another very simple thing that you can do for any car, this is not specific to a Mazda Protégé, you can do this with anything, especially a little four cylinder like this with the, the spark plug staring you in the face. I'm actually not looking forward to changing them in my GT86 since it's a boxer engine and a lot of people complain about it being hard but since everybody complains about everything being difficult and everything that I've done so far both on this car and the 86 I'm really not that nervous about it about it and you shouldn't be either save yourself some money educate yourself there's information all over the internet we are in the information age do your own oil changes change your own tires there's nothing wrong with getting your hands a little bit dirty Okay, this is going to be the simplest, most unneeded explanation of any video I've ever done and ever will do, but why not? Servicing a, just a, a usual service on a normal car. Okay, here we go. This incredibly difficult project that we're doing. I'm trying not to strip anything, knock anything loose. Don't go with under leverage like I just did. Make sure you have your oil drain pan here. Try not to drop the bolt in the oil. That makes for a hell of a messy experience. And keep in mind that the oil will slowly move forward comes out and good lord look how dirty that is it hasn't even been in there but for 4,000 miles granted those are pretty hard driven miles and don't I know about my oily mess I had a bit of a drip on something that's needs an issue it's not leaking oil out of anything it's a loose uh, catch can line so be sure to drain it out until it's just drips there's no sense in leaving that nasty dirty oil in there and I like to wipe off the back of my drain plug in case there is any particles on it it wouldn't really matter I don't guess in the long run whether you did or not but why put a dirty plug back in the car so we're gonna let this finish draining I'm going to put the plug back in and then I'm going to remove the filter. And the filter is annoying to get to, but it's easy if you have the right wrench, which I will show you. The service manual calls for 22 to 30 pounds. And as usual, I like to shoot for right in the middle. I figure that's usually the safest bet. So we're going to go to 26. And with this drain plug, this is a steel plug and a steel pan, so really you just don't want to over tighten it. But I'm kind of anal about my about my uh, torque specs on stuff, so we're going to 26 right there. Maybe 27. Don't judge me. I mean, what if my wrench is wrong? All right. We'll call that good. Now let's get to that filter. And don't forget to back your torque wrench off. That's how they get out of whack, is if you leave them, if you leave them set they will uh, not like it that's how they they lose their accuracy okay now bear with me as I try to get a little bit of light up here 
Okay, here's our oil filter. Now, the tool that I use to get it is not your typical looped filter wrench. I use one of these little beauties. And pardon me while I get in the way of the camera here and make you guys lose sight of this for those still actually watching this thing. It should not be on there tight. I've never put an oil filter on tighter than by hand. There's seriously no sense in it. It's an oil filter with a rubber gasket. So that's pretty much all there is to this. Hopefully no oil will come dripping out of this on me since I'm in such a precarious position here. And one thing I like to do when I install the new filter, especially if you've still got your drain pan sitting under here, I really like to put just a little smear of oil on the gasket so it doesn't bind or anything going in or, or wrinkle the wrinkle the gasket up and I'll even put a little bit in the threads just just to touch the threads just so there's just a just the slightest bit of lubrication on it have to adjust positions here to get my full grip on it here that probably should be good enough let me move you guys out of the way and I'm gonna put my final grip on it here and burn my arm on the damn drop light Okay, that's all there is to it. Now we're going up top, we're gonna to fill her with oil and go from there. All right, here we are, our last last little bit for the worst video I've probably ever made. I'm probably gonna get zero views for this one. But that's okay if it helps just one person. That's the majority of the point to do this. So anyway, We've replaced the filter, torqued the cap back down. I'll show you another one of my secrets, even though nobody ever gives me any credit. Highly appreciated in my time, especially for my your mom jokes. So I actually put two little holes here in these big jugs so I don't spill everywhere. I put a little mouth at the bottom and a little breather hole at the top. And I've done this the last four times I've changed the oil in this car and I've been quite lucky to never spill a drop but by God you watch me drop now that I'm on camera doing it. There we go. Nice and easy at first. And I can't remember exactly what the quantity is on these. I think it's somewhere around four quarts or something. I usually put three and a half in it and I pull the stick and just check. And there we go. Do a little bit of a drip. Hold on. Before it runs down the damn block. I know it's a Mazda and it drips oil, but still. Mm -hmm. I believe we're going to keep it right where it is. One thing you want to make sure you do when you're done with these, obviously, start them up. And if you have an oil pressure gauge like I do, watch it. Make sure your pressure comes up. 
for God's sakes, don't rev anything up as soon as you start them cold, especially with fresh oil change. Let them run for a minute or two and check under them, make sure there's no leaks, drips, or otherwise before you set everything on the ground. It's always a good form of practice. <laughs> Come <laughs> on.